Today on 10 Minute IT Gens, we're joined by Brian Harris, who's the Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer at SAS. SAS envision a world where everyone can make better decisions, grounded in trusted data and assisted by the productivity and speed of SAS AI and analytics. When decisions need to happen at just the right moment, you need the world's most trustworthy analytics brand and people to give you confidence. Brian joins us today to tell us more about SAS and some of his thoughts on artificial intelligence. Thank you for coming along, Brian, and welcome to the gym. Tom, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Well, thank you. Well, let's get straight into it. For a business that hasn't worked with SaaS before, what are your key products and offerings? Well, first of all, we have uh, we're really core to our business is a is an analytics platform, analytics and AI platform. Uh, we we all talk about that as Satisfy today, and that really sets the foundation for all of our other solutions that are built on top of that. And so for us, number one is we focus on delivering an incredible productivity for AI and analytics and organizations. How do we enable organizations to become very, um, very, very productive with data and getting to decisions and really ultimately getting business outcomes with AI and analytics. And that platform is the basis for our solutions that spans multiple industries in uh, the fraud and security intelligence, into banking, um, into health and life sciences, over, over to customer intelligence type capabilities where we're trying to understand uh, next best action, next best offer um, through to in, uh, basically manufacturing and industri industrial uh, implementations. So we do a lot of work with manufacturers um, and, uh, and also retail. So uh, we do we just really our, our software is pretty much in every industry that you can imagine, we have our software helping customers uh, get better insights with data. Well, now, the world of generative AI is ever-evolving and rapidly expanding. Um, what do you see as some of the major opportunities for businesses? Well, let's, I think, I want to talk about it. It's in the, it, obviously, it's in a very big hype cycle right now. So we've seen uh, new technologies, you know, get overhyped and then under-deliver. Under -deliver. And I want to make sure that we're clear that we believe absolutely that generative AI has an incredible opportunity the idea that you can now reduce the experience of, of AI through a conversation, it actually removes all kinds of barriers to adoption. And that's that really is why many of us in the industry are so excited because when you make the make it so simple for a human to interact with AI and get answers, it means we've now got a larger market we can impact and really make a better uh, a, a better impact in the world for those who are trying to get insights from data. So that being said, um, what we've seen is that there's a lot of exciting things happening with generative AI on public domain data. So the big you know discussions now is around all these large language models that have studied the internet and data on the internet. What businesses are asking for now is how do I take that those large language models in the uh, public domain and start to fine tune those internally and securely inside their own data sets, inside their own environments. And so for us at SAS, one of our goals is really to be the leader in driving value with real tangible value with generative AI in industries for our customers. And so for us, that's a big focus for us. We think that's where the, the number, kind of the number one uh, opportunity is, is how do you make this real for businesses on their data? Well, in a uh, recent research report from SAS, 87% of executives said they believe resiliency is very or somewhat uh, important for their compliance, but only 47% view their company as very resilient. How is SAS helping to bridge this gap? Well, this is a really interesting study because we had to get in this feedback. It really kind of allowed companies to express their concerns in a you know, vulnerable way, really, about how do we deal with all this change. And for the last three years, it just feels like we've had this never ending sequence of disruptions, whether we went from obviously COVID-19 to the supply chain to now, you know, geopolitical risk and, and other things, uh, hybrid workforces. And I think what we saw coming out of this is really five main categories, which is basically speed and agility was number one in concern. Second is innovation. Third is really um, equity and responsibility is related to their business. Fourth is around data culture and data literacy and really building a culture of data literacy in the organization. And then the last one was really this idea of curiosity. So let me just real quickly unpack each of those. You know, First and foremost, speed and agility 
came, it rose to number one because really the reality is that this, this disruptive experience we're having with business in the world today, uh, companies want to feel like they can navigate disruption. And so how quickly can they pivot through a change in the market dynamic is really important for them to build confidence. It also means that if you have the ability to react faster in the market, you can create time and space for innovation. As I uh, talk to others, it's like, if you just feel like you're just trying to catch up, you really have no time to innovate. So the speed and agility and innovation kind of pair together. I think third, where you talk about uh, equity and responsibility, it, it is really about customers really aligning to businesses and businesses aligning to customers' shared value systems around trying to say, how can we do good in the world while also do the right thing while also being profitable, which is, you know, we are in business, you know, most companies that are profit, for-profit companies are looking to make some money as well. And how do you find the intersection between doing the right thing and being a profitable organization is something that we think is very, very important uh, in, in the customer behaviors that we're seeing in the market. Third is data culture, I'm sorry, fourth is uh, data culture and literacy. I think from there, the way we see this is that I think as the companies are trying to affect change in their organization, they're realizing how far they have to go down and, and how wide they need to go to really get people to be thinking about becoming data driven. And so we, SAS, do a lot with uh, our software to help um, really with, through our software teach. So when you're using our software, we make it easy to understand uh, when we make a decision or we recommend a decision for you that we explain it in very layman in layman's terms for people to learn how those things are being done and how the software operates. So, um, and then curiosity is really like, is really just saying like, never lose that spirit of asking the what if, or what if we can, what if we could do this? What if we could change our business this way? And I think for us as a company, it's just, we really focus on those. We, we're on the SaaS Innovate Tour, right? Happening around the world. We talk about this, from a basis of strength, right? Now's the time in the market to be thinking about innovation. I think right now, everyone is so disrupted that they're starting to think about, you know, looking very inward and just looking at only cost controls. But today is a moment where it's like, you, you can, if you can really start to drive um, speed and agility through analytics and AI, which is, you know, using software that SaaS provides, then you can start thinking about ways to disrupt your competitors. And I think for us, that's really a big theme of what we're talking about uh, as we're on tour around the world talking to customers. Well, now this sort of leads into that a little bit. SAS recently announced that it would be investing a billion dollars into AI over the next three years, which will total two billion over six years. Uh, what are the key drivers of this investment? Well, first was, remember when I was talking about our platform, that first investment was really taking our software and transforming it into cloud native and cloud portable. So you can run SaaS software wherever you need to um, on the cloud of your choice, um, on premise, or even at the edge if needed. And um, so that, that was really the first step. The second one is though, is around taking that platform and then building solutions, industry focused solutions on this. One of the things I, I uh, constantly hear when I'm on the, this, uh, this whole tour around the world is CEOs, CIOs saying, uh, we are trying to do more with less, right? So we have a much more uh, challenging economic environment. So I need a simpler ecosystem of vendors and I wanna get more value out of each vendor, which means, what does that translate to us? That means how can SaaS solve more problems within a customer's uh, environment? And so we see this trend enduring for quite a while here where a customer now can interact with us and buy, a, you know, say they're in, in, for instance, in banking, they may want to do something in a fraud space with like payments fraud, but they also have AML uh, concerns they need to address, or they might want to look at integrated balance sheet management. And our goal is to build solutions that really allow them to buy one value stream, um, say in fraud, and quickly add additional capabilities across the entire, their entire, um, you know, uh, business ecosystem. And so when we do that, we win and the customer wins. And that's how we see a growth path for the business moving forward. Well, now, I guess one final question, how does SAS help businesses understand their data and gain real insights? Well, first, we have a whole process in that. So one of our capabilities is uh, something called information governance that allows us to uh, really just take connectors into their entire data estate and crawl their entire data estate. We analyze data, we build a data catalog, 
and then we allow them to see quality metrics of the data associated from that analysis. And that alone is a big, huge help for customers, right? Just day one is we can suddenly make them feel like they can get their arms around their entire data state in the organization. And then we have a very, um, for us, what we have is we have a very repeatable, we've actually spent over a decade, honestly, uh, working on what we call the AI and analytics lifecycle, which allows us to be, give a very prescriptive approach to how they leverage data and put it through a modeling process to make predictive um, decisions off of data. And um, this is what we're renowned for actually in, in the industry and the pace at which we can do this and the entire um, fully integrated workflow for that is what really differentiates us in the market. Um, so you can think of it this way, when you kind of do that discovery of data first, you can then identify which data you want to put through this uh, AI lifecycle. And then from there, build a model tournament to classify, uh, to basically maybe predict a customer churn scenario, or you want to uh, predict, uh, say, a, a loan defaults in your uh, overall uh, portfolio of, of, uh, of loans. Uh, and there's many, many more to consider. Um, you got to build a model tournament to understand what models that are out there can help make that prediction uh, most effectively. So we let, we enable you to do this with button clicks and just go through and we can turn a, a business analyst into a, you know, essentially a data scientist in minutes and allow them to gain the advantage of our software to give them the ability to um, gain new insights, make new decisions about their data. And from there, deploy that into production and help the business then realize uh, either improved efficiencies um, to their margins um, or reflect that in top line revenue growth or, or a combination of both. Well, now also just quickly, uh, if an enterprise end user wanted to engage with SaaS, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I would go to www.sas.com and we have a, a really a very robust uh, website that has a layout of all of our, our platforms, SAS via our solutions. Um, we have a great uh, listing of customers out there as well as use cases that are out there. Um, we have some YouTube channels we can look at if you wanna see videos of the software in action. Uh, we can, we obviously we have a great uh, Twitter stream as well, but there's all the social media channels we can use for that as well. But our website is really our, is a main place for people to learn and understand who we are, what we do. And you can dig deep in there to see all the ways that companies around the world are using uh, using SaaS software. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the jam, Brian, and hearing more about SaaS and some of your thoughts on where artificial intelligence is going. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from you guys very soon. You got it. Thanks for having me. Have a great one.